The anterior pituitary gland is called the adenohypophysis, and it has six hormones that are all peptide hormones. And these six hormones are listed below. All of them, except for the growth hormone, activate target cells via the uh, second messenger system. And that second messenger is cyclic AMP. So these hormones include the growth hormone, GH, the thyroid stimulating hormone, TSH, the adrenocorticotropic hormone. And remember, it kind of tells you what it does. It stimulates the cortex of the adrenal gland, the follicle stimulating hormone, FSH, luteinizing hormone, LH, both of which are uh, reproductive hormones, FSH and LH, and then prolactin, PRL. So again, um, all of them, but the growth hormone work via a second messenger system. So let's look at the growth hormone first. The growth hormone is also called somatotropin because it's produced by somatotropic cells. It has direct actions on metabolism and indirect effects on growth promoting activities. So the direct effect that it has is it does what's called glucose sparing. And what this does is decreases the action of the glucose uptake and metabolism. It also triggers the liver to break down glycogen into glucose. So it wants to make glucose more available for growth, increases levels of other nutrients to synthesize more tissue cells and that would be fatty acids, and that can be used for protein synthesis. So the indirect actions that growth hormone has is it triggers the liver, the skeletal muscle, and bone to produce insulin-like growth factors. So um, these tissues, liver, muscles, bone, are the target tissue for growth hormone. And the insulin-like growth hormone kind of helps out with cellular uptake of nutrients because insulin's job is to allow for the uptake of glucose from the blood into the tissue. So growth hormone stimulates most cells to enlarge and divide, but, targets, but the major targets are bone and skeletal muscle. So the regulation for the secretion of growth hormone, growth hormone release or inhibition, um, there is two hormones released from the hypothalamus, growth hormone releasing hormone that stimulates the growth hormone to be released. It's triggered when there is low blood growth hormone, low glucose, um, high amino acid levels. And then the opposing hormone from the hypothalamus is growth hormone inhibiting hormone and that blocks the, product, the release of growth hormone from the anterior pituitary gland. So that would be triggered when there's too much growth hormone or too much insulin growth factor. So this chart is showing the growth promoting and the metabolic actions of the growth hormone. So let's look a little more closely at that. And so we can see at the top of this flow chart that um, low deep sleep, um, low blood glucose exercise, other stimuli, they act via the hypothalamus. The hypothalamus responds by stimulating the growth hormone. So again, growth hormone releasing hormone and growth hormone inhibiting hormone are the two hormones from the hypothalamus. They stimulate the anterior pituitary to release growth hormone. Then growth hormone then acts on the target tissues within the body. So again, there's the direct actions that we see over here mentioned on the previous slides and the indirect actions over here. And the big thing that growth hormone does is it's gonna increase the rate of protein synthesis by the cells in the skeletal and the muscular system. So an overall pro-growth effect. So that chart is very helpful in telling us what it does. Now for the homeostatic imbalances of growth hormone, we can see them shown on this slide. So if there's too much secretion of growth hormone caused by the, like an anterior pituitary tumor, for example, that results in gigantism for children. And in adults, it's called acromegaly. 
And acromegaly occurs because it's, it occurs after the epiphyseal plate has closed. And so areas of the body like the hands, the feet, and the face are going to increase in size. The opposite of this is hyposecretion. And in children, that can result in pituitary dwarfism, where the, the height may reach only four feet. In adults, it usually doesn't cause problems. So the next anterior pituitary hormone that we're going to look at is thyroid stimulating hormone. Now, this hormone is going to stimulate the thyroid gland. So it's different than the thyroid hormone. The thyroid hormone is released from the thyroid, not from the anterior pituitary gland. That's an important, um, an, an important difference to make sure that you're aware of. So its secretion is on this flow chart. And um, the target cell for the thyroid stimulating hormone then is the follicle cells of the thyroid of this hormone. So notice that all of these work via negative feedback. So based on the production of thyroid hormones or thyroid stimulating hormone, there can be a signal that goes back to the anterior pituitary gland or the hypothalamus. And if there's um, too much of it, for example, that's going to decrease the production of TRH, thyroid um, releasing hormone, or TSH, thyroid stimulating hormones, so that the thyroid hormones are at a specific level. So the next hormone is the one that affects the adrenal cortex called the adrenocorticotropic hormone, ACTH. And again, there's a hormone from the hypothalamus that controls its release from the anterior pituitary. That hormone is called corticotropin releasing hormone, CRH. And it's, it's released in a daily manner. So it's actually highest in the morning, which makes sense. The next hormones are what are called the gonadotropins, and they're called this because they affect the gonads, and it's for both male and female. So FSH stands for follicle stimulating hormone, and LH stands for luteinizing hormone. The last hormone then is prolactin, secreted by prolactin cells of the anterior pituitary gland. And the role in males is not well understood yet. So it's primarily for females. It stimulates milk production in females. So it affects the target tissue would be the breast tissue. And the blood levels of prolactin, they start to rise toward the end of pregnancy in preparation for milk production. So the trigger then that causes release is stimulation of the um, breast. So suckling of the infant stimulates prolactin release. And that's going to promote continued milk production and lactation. So our next slide shows the homeostatic imbalances for prolactin. So if there's not enough prolactin production, hyposecretion, um, it's really not a problem in anyone except the women who choose to nurse. If there's too much, that could be due to maybe an abnormality of the anterior pituitary tumor. So the basically the pituitary doesn't realize there's a tumor in it and it keeps producing more and more prolactin. So there could be inappropriate lactation, lack of menses, infertility in females, or in males there could be impotence. So there's various um, problems that could occur.